did you start writing? Well, they, that was a different example because uh, they had a script that was written by Mark Martin. And, uh, and it wasn't focused enough. And they had a little, they were having trouble getting it financed. And they needed a focus and uh, so Bob, both Bob and Martin came to me and uh, asked if I would, uh, you know, sort of lean my shoulder to the task and thin it out, organize it, get the theme down. And, uh, which I did. Uh, and he sort of unified it so that they were able to perceive what it was about. They couldn't quite get a handle on it. So I did that and uh, and that gave them a direction to go and then they went in that direction and you know the final movie on screen is is not Mark Martin's script. It's not even my script. It's yet another thing, you know. Or someone pointed out uh, once that De Niro was with you know the perfect uh, actor. Uh, you know he's like the, the meeting ground for your background of Protestantism and Marty's Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's uh, like I say, it's a serendipity. On Obsession, that for, for me is my favorite De Palma film. I think he he's much better uh, directing other people's material. And that that script started uh, the original time was Deja Vu. I was wondering um, what your feelings were about that film. Yeah, well, I've sort of blathered on in uh, certain publications about that script and how certain things were changed. And, and then a couple weeks ago, I was in a restaurant and I heard this voice booming across the room. So it was a familiar voice I hadn't heard in three years. Brian yelling, Schrader. And I looked over and I said, why don't you give me a break. I mean, every time I open a goddamn magazine, you're, you know, it's this obsession, this obsession, that. Get a let it rest. Give me a break. And I went over and I talked to him. I said, you're right, Brian. I am being a real asshole. And uh, from now on, I'll, I will never, I will never mention any differences we may have had. So that's, that's the end of any obsession story. Now, you did it in early, the first draft of Close Encounters? That's another, that's another bit of assholery that uh, I am now refraining from. We're going to put all these things to rest right I, here, okay? I'm not going to... I'm getting out of the sour grapes business. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I've done enough things on my own that I can be proud of without trying to rein in on Stephen. And uh, how about the Yakuza? Were you happy with that? No, but uh, I was happy that it created a career for me. Uh, I mean, you know, Sidney Pollack is a, is, a, is a very good and talented man. His sensibility is quite different than mine. And he is not the director that I would normally be associated with. And, uh, but on the other hand, that's how my career began. Mm -hmm. They bought that script, paid me a lot of money, and all of a sudden I was a viable screenwriter. And I was able to work and create uh, an occupation. So I thank Sidney and Warner Brothers for that. Which brings us to your first film as a director, Blue Collar. Um, that was an A-team picture, and John Millius was no. the exec on it? No. That was hardcore. Hardcore. Blue Collar was uh, something I had put together on my own and then, and then sold, developed through uh, TAT, Norman Lear. Mm -hmm. And Norman Lear then sold it to Universal. Uh, what are your feelings on that film now? I, I like it. I mean, I, mean I, I, I still think it's Pryor's best work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like, the, I, I, I like the film. A lot of other people like it. I think it's a bit over-plotted and a bit uh, simplistic. But then that was the, the idea of my first film, just to load in a whole lot of plot, because I knew that uh, whatever else went wrong, as long as I had three characters going and about three stories going, I could always cut to something else. And that was how I protected myself from having a, uh, a first film flop, 
because uh, you know if you if you really bottom out the first time your first film you know odds are there won't be a second one and you you have to make certain calculations to, to protect yourself from uh, catastrophe on the first film so therefore you know I developed an ensemble cast and uh, and a low budget and uh, you know and, and over plotting and things like that and even though the film was not uh, financially successful it was you know well received enough to uh, you know keep my career alive my last question um how did your screenwriting teaching stint over Columbia, how did that affect your work? Oh, not at all, unfortunately. Uh, I went, I, I had taught the course a couple times before at different colleges. And it is a method I teach, you know, I, I teach my own way of screenwriting. And I thought that by teaching that I would uh, free myself up to do some writing that I hadn't been able to do. And, and about halfway through the course, I had to kind of admit to the students that uh, that even though this is a good method, and even though it's worked for me in the past, it is not working for me now. And uh, and so, in fact, it, it didn't work for me. Uh, you know, hopefully, it's it's worked for them, or some of them, one of them maybe. But it didn't really work for me. Well, thank you for being on the show, and best of luck with Cat People. Okay. Thanks, we have a present for you on behalf of the Biograph staff in admiration of your mm. your work. My God, I'm going to get it. <laughs> Here you go. I'm going to get a, something disastrous I can feel. <laughs> <laughs> Just Thank what we you. figured you always wanted. We were looking for something related to cats. <laughs> it goes into my cat memorabilia. <laughs> Unlike Scorsese, are we still in the air? Yes. Unlike Scorsese, I, have, I keep absolutely nothing regarding my own work. I don't have posters, I don't have pictures. Once they happen, they're gone. Do you want them? We yeah. have them. <laughs> I got everything you ever did here. I don't want them, I don't know, I don't know why. You know, Marty, you know, De Niro calls Marty the library, you know, and uh, De Niro sends like his mail to Scorsese, because Scorsese files everything, you know. Uh, but, uh, I don't I mean, I just, I feel oppressed. I feel oppressed by the things I've done that are behind me, because I always want to do something new, and I don't ever want to feel that anything I've done before is holding me back from doing something else. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, it's all in the book. No, it's not.